All right, how's it going, everybody? So today we're going to be covering Chapter 7, and it will be the first half of Chapter 7. So I'm going to split the Chapter 7 lecture into two halves, because it is a long chapter, and I do want to cover everything in, in thorough detail. So the first one will go up today, and the second one will go tomorrow. And in the first one, we're going to cover chemical reactions and um, how to balance chemical reactions and different types of chemical reactions. Now, uh, going forward in the class, you're, everyone should have handed in their Chapter 6 homework for Friday class last Friday and for the Tuesday class last Tuesday. Now, for the next homework, it'll be a Chapter 6 slash 7 worksheet. And that's on Blackboard already, and I think I made an assignment for it, but I, I'll make an assignment for it. And it'll be due for my Tuesday class, it'll be due next Tuesday. For my Friday class, it'll be due next Friday. So you'll have a lot of time to do that. Also, you'll have a practice exam, which will cover Chapter 6 and 7, because our Exam 2 is going to cover Chapter 6 and 7 also. If you can hear my cat in the background. Um, anyway, so... <coughs> she's meowing a lot. Whatever, she wants attention. Okay, anyway. <coughs> so... Um, what was I getting at? Yeah, so the exam is going to be next week. Now, what this means is for for both classes, for my Tuesday and my Friday class, I will be uploading the exam on Monday morning on Blackboard, and the assignment will be open until Friday night. So you'll have an entire week to get a chance to, to do it. But as soon as you open the file, you'll have a three-hour time limit. So as soon as you open either the Word or the PDF, you'll have three hours to complete it. So that's the way that's going to work. If you have any questions about that, let me know. Okay, let's get into Chapter 7, and then um, we'll, we'll, we'll get through as much as we can. We'll get through half of it now. Okay, so today we'll be learning about chemical reactions and different, chemical, uh, different types of reactions, and we'll be uh, looking at the... We'll quantify these chemical changes that we know about. So chemical changes, we know that when we are combining different chemicals together to make a completely new substance, such as this example of silver tarnishing, right? Remember burning, tarnishing, oxidizing, uh, rusting. These are all different types of chemical changes where, the, in this case for tarnishing, the silver becomes, uh, has, that reacts with the air, reacts with hydrogen sulfide in the air, and it becomes silver sulfide. So that's a, it's a new substance, and it creates that black tarnishing color that you see on this fork. So we're going to be seeing the different types of reactions and chemical reactions that cause these different phenomena. And here's an example of a chemical reaction. So we're going to be learning how to write these and how to, um, like how to show them. So here's what a chemical reaction looks like. <clears throat> now, you see that you have one substance, in this case it's carbon, plus O2, in this case oxygen gas. And it reacts, that's what this arrow means, to create CO2. This, this is a, a Greek letter delta, and this means heat. It means with the addition of heat, carbon and oxygen react together to make carbon dioxide. So, oh, my cat is, wants, she wants attention. Okay, so anyway, um, this is a, an example of a chemical reaction. And the reaction can be split into two different types of chemicals, the reactants and the products. So the reactants are always on the left side of the equation, always on the, the direction where the arrows are coming from. The arrows coming from this left side. Those are the reactants. And it's going towards the products. So the arrow is going towards the products. A question I could ask is, which of the following are reactants? Which of the following are products? So the carbon and the oxygen gas will be reactants. The CO2 will be the product. So there could be one or more products or even one or more reactants. There's no set thing that one plus one equals two, or one thing plus one thing equals one thing. It could be, this can happen the opposite way too. This can happen, it all depends on what the arrow is saying, if it's going left or right. Um, there's a, many different types of reactions too. So um, this is just one simple example. Okay. So here's basically what I just said. The arrow tells you it's like an equal sign. So it's reactants, they react together to produce products. That's the way you should think about the reaction. Reactants, one or more reactants react together to create or to produce a product or products. 
Um, also, so you saw in the previous example, you have solid, you have this S, G, and G, right? That, those are not elements, those are not different compounds. Don't be confused by those. Those are simply just the states of the reactants or products, meaning S is solid, L is liquid, G is gas, and AQ is aqueous. And what aqueous means is that basically it, reacts with water. It, it, um, can, it's what we call miscible in water, meaning it, it mixes with water, in, in, for lack of fancy terms. So if you have aqueous, like let's say um, acids, bases, salt, those are all aqueous because they all react, they all um, mix with water. If you have gasoline or oil, those are not going to be aqueous. Those are going to be liquids because they don't mix with water. So the aqueous dissolved in water. Okay, so um, yeah, so now we're knowing that. Here's a, just a chart to just to break it down a little, or get a summary of the anatomy, if you will, of a chemical reaction. So the plus is you're adding things together. You could have three reactants added together to make two products. So you could have any combination to make any combination, really. Um, this delta, this little triangle, means the reactants are heated. Without the delta, it just means they react by themselves. But usually, there's usually some heat. But don't really worry about that too much. And then the S, L, G, and A, Q, that means the state that the reactants or products are in. Okay, moving on. So in these chemical reactions, <coughs> in these chemical reactions, you have a finite number of particles. And there's no particles gained or lost. So in a normal chemical reaction. So if we look at this one we, that we saw before, carbon, just one atom of carbon, C, it happens to be solid, reacts with one molecule of O2. So it has two oxygen molecule, oxygen atoms. That reacts together to make CO2. And you see that every atom that's in the reactants is accounted for in the products. There is nothing lost or gained. And that's how a perfect chemical reaction should work. That nothing should be lost or gained for going from the left side of the equation to the right side of the equation. And this is why we're going to balance equations. Because sometimes when you write a chemical reaction, it's not always the case that it works out to be balanced. This happens, sometimes it's, just, it, it, it's balanced automatically, but a lot of times you have to do work for it to be balanced. So here's what we're going to do. So, let's take a look at this equation. All right. So, I'm going to copy it. And I'll bring it to a new... There we go. All right. So, we have this reaction, right? Aluminum in a solid form plus silver... Sorry, sulfur. Sulfur in a solid form creates aluminum sulfide, right? Now, let's do the same thing that we did for our carbon and an oxygen reaction and see that if the left side cancels out with the right side. Aluminum, there's one aluminum here, right? On the product side, there's two aluminums. That's not good. Sulfur, there's one sulfur here, three sulfurs here. That's not good either. So we have to do something in order to make this reaction balance because this reaction, and the reason why we balance equations is because this reaction cannot happen in nature because you can't have one atom of aluminum react with one atom of sulfur to create a compound with two atoms of aluminum and three atoms of sulfur. That's physically impossible because of the law of conservation of matter and mass. So you can't do that. So what we can do is we can actually modify the coefficients, meaning the numbers before each compound or molecule. We can, we can do that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'll bounce it first, then I'll explain it. So if I put a 2 here, I'll put it in bold. If I put a 2 there, and then I put a 3 there, now we're balanced. So what I did was I put numbers to change the coefficients, meaning in front of each compound. You can't put numbers in the subscript right here. You can't make this ALS, because ALS, you can't change the compound. You can only change the coefficients in front of each compound. That's a, a very important rule. So I'm going to write that down here. 
you cannot change subscripts. So you can't change the subscripts. You can only change the numbers in front. This one, this one, and if this is a one, because it, I wrote nothing here, it's a one. But sometimes you will write different coefficients for every compound in the equation. But in this case, we only have it for two. So I hope that makes sense. Now, how did I how did I do? This is a relatively simple one, but the way I went about it is let's take it from the from the start again. Okay. So the way I balance equations. It's important to write this down, and it's in the notes too. So, and I, I do it a little bit differently than than others might. So, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the equation, and you're going to read it. Just read it. The first thing you see, aluminum. You will you will compare the aluminum from the left side with the aluminum from the right side. You will see the difference if there is any, and you will put the corresponding coefficient to cancel out that difference. What I mean by that, let's do it. Aluminum. There is one aluminum here. Let's look at the right side. There are two aluminums. Okay? Put a 2 there. Not 23. Put a 2. Moving on. Sulfur. Sulfur. There is one sulfur here. Sulfur. There are three sulfurs here. Alright? Three. Done. That's it. So this is balanced now. Balanced. <clears throat> All right, so let's do more examples. That's a pretty easy example. And here's how to, their explanation of it. Okay, so let's do another one. So we want to balance these. All right, let's take this one. and Actually, we could do it right here. All right, so first one. We're going to read it like a book. We're going to read it like, like a sentence. All right, P4. Don't, worry, don't really worry about the solid, the liquid. Don't worry, worry about the states. That doesn't matter or the gas. It's not going to change the way you balance the equation at all. Okay, so P4, there are four phosphoruses. Let's go to the right side. There is one phosphorus. Alright, let's put a four here because that would make the phosphorus on the left and right side equal. Right? If we look again, P4, 4, P. Now something else. Putting this coefficient here, I'll underline it. Putting the coefficient there means that, co that 4 corresponds to everything after it. Not just 4 phosphoruses, there's 4 Br3s. This means there is not only 3 bromines, there's 4 times 3 bromines. So there's 12 bromines. That's important. So this is just this is very mathematically um, intensive. You have, to keep it, you have to keep your numbers in, track, in, in, in line. Okay, so let's continue. So we did the phosphorus, now let's look at the bromine. So bromine, Br2. All right, there's two on the left side. On the right side, Br3. But we have a coefficient already there, meaning we have to see how many bromines there are currently. Four times three, 12. There are 12 bromines on the right side. Now we look at the left side again. Bromine, Br2. Br2. So there are 12 bromines on the right, 2 bromines on the left. Therefore, we have to put a 6 on the left side. Now, hopefully you understand that, but if not, you can always um, rewind. But the reason why we're putting a 6 is because now we have 6 times 2, which is 12. And that equals that's the number of bromines. On the right side, we have 4 times 3, which is also 12 which is 12 bromines. So now the entire equation is balanced. So that works out. All right, balanced. All right, good, moving on. Next one. So, aluminum, we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna read it. AL, aluminum. There's one aluminum on the left. Look at the right. There's two aluminums on the right. Therefore, we have to put a two right there. Okay, next. Iron, Fe2. There is Fe2 on the left side. Iron on the right side is only one. So we need to put a two there. Then the next atom, the last one, is oxygen. There's three oxygens here. Now if we look at the right side, there also happens to be three oxygens. So we're good. We're done. So we could always check our work and see from the start if we have everything to be balanced out. 
So 2 times aluminum is 2 aluminums. Right side, Al2, that's also 2. Fe2, that's 2. 2Fe, two that checks out. O3 and O3. So that's a balanced equation. So hopefully it's not too bad. And they don't really get much harder than that. Okay, so here's the solutions for those. All right, so let's do this one. So sometimes I could give you the question in a word problem. And it, it's very simple because it, I just tell you the chemical reaction instead of writing it out for you. So this one is balance the chemical react equation when solid Fe3O4 reacts with hydrogen gas to produce solid iron and water. Okay, so to me, this means when solid Fe3O4, don't really worry about the solid, the liquid, or the gas. Just you have Fe3O4 reacts with, reacts with. That means plus, plus H2. Yield, reacts to produce, reacts with that to produce. Produce means the arrow. Solid iron, so Fe, plus water, which is H2O. That's exactly what we have. So this is the reaction that we're trying to balance. This, this too should be a subscript. Where is it? Subscript. There we go. All right. So let's balance this equation. Fe3. On the left side is Fe3. On the right side, there is just one Fe. So we need to make this a 3. Why is that? Okay, there we go. All right. Next, O4. Here we have O. All right. So we put a 4 here. Make this bigger. Yeah. Put a 4 there. Good. Next, H2. So we have two hydrogens on the left. And in this case, on the right side, we have H2, but we have a 4 in front of it. 4 times 2 is 8. So we have 8 hydrogens, 2 hydrogens. So we should put a 4 here as well. Let's see. Let me change, the, change that. There we go. <coughs> OK. Good. So that is the finished product. That's the balance equation. And we can check it if we want. So Fe3, 3Fe. Good. O4, 4O. 4H2, 4H2O. So 4H2. That means eight hydrogens. Eight hydrogens here. All right. Good. All right. So moving on. So that's the answers. All right, so now we can balance with polyatomic ions also. Now, this is just as simple, but it's actually more simple because even though the equations seem more complicated, like if you look at this equation, you have a lot going on here. This is sodium phosphate plus magnesium chloride yields magnesium phosphate plus NaCl, right? There's a lot going on. But if you spot your polyatomic ions, meaning PO4, I think there's only one here, PO4, right? If you spot your polyatomic ion, you don't have to, you can view that polyatomic ion as one entity. Just like we do for naming, we call it phosphate, right? Same thing for balancing. We could just use it as one entity, right? We don't have to break it down into a, its phosphoruses and oxygens. We don't have to do that. So here's what I mean. If we're trying to balance it, here's the same equation. If we're trying to balance it, what we can do is we can just do the exact same thing, but we view our PO4 as phosphate. So let's do that. Na3. All right, let's look at the right side. Na. There's one Na. So we're going to put a 3 here. Good. Next, PO4. Don't look at it as phosphorus and an oxygen because you get confused. Phosphorus and oxygen, PO4 makes phosphate. So let's look at the entire, you can even put in parentheses if it helps you. Like that. So PO4 here, you have one PO4. Here, you have two PO4s. Therefore, we have to put a two in front of there. That makes sense because we have two PO4s. Here, you have PO4, two. This two means that there's two of whatever's before it, which is just the PO4, not the MG. Okay, so now we need to go back because now we put a coefficient here. So it's good to go back. We have two Na3, 
meaning we have six NAs. Going to the right side, we have three NAs. If we make this a six, that, that, that solves our problem. Okay, moving on. We have the NAs done, phosphates done, looking at magnesium. Mg, there's one of them here. Mg3, there's three of them there. All right, we're going to put a three. Good. So you have three Mg, Mg3, good. Now we have three Cl2, meaning six Cl. Here you have six NaCl, so six Cl. That, that's perfect. That means it's balanced. Okay, good. I'll make this a little smaller so it can fit on the page. Yeah, okay, good. So there we go. That's a perfectly balanced equation. <clears throat> okay, and here's how they did it. All right, here's some more examples for practice. Um, I'm gonna, you can pause it here and work on them on your own. Definitely, I definitely, it gets so easy once you do practice, practice, practice. So do that. Okay, so the last thing we're going to cover in this little snippet, is this little half lecture, is going to be the types of reactions. So <clears throat> there's the answers to the previous problems. All right, types of reactions. And this is just um, definitions. So there are five different types of reactions that we're going to cover. So the first one is combination reactions. And you can kind of think about what that sounds like. You're combining things, right? Decomposition reactions, which you're decomposing something, right? Single replacement, double replacement, and combustion, right? And we should already know what combustion looks like, but we'll cover it in detail here. All right, so combination reactions. So very simple, A plus B equals C. That's it. So you're going to have two or more elements, meaning, or, or compounds, to form one product. So that's all it is. Here's some examples. You're having A plus B equals AB, equals um, something different. I don't know. It could be AB or A plus B equals C. doesn't matter. The idea is you're, creating, you're having two or more things to create one thing. You are combining things. So that's a combination reaction. So the kind of questions I should give you, or I will give you on the test, are uh, which of the following is a combustion reaction? Or which of the following is a, or the following reaction is a type of blank, is combination. And, and you should know the differences. Okay, so here's some combination reactions with magnesium and oxygen to create magnesium oxide. So this is more of, this is when you burn not burn, but this is when you heat up magnesium ribbon. And I think you were supposed to do that in the lab. I'm not sure if you did already, but um, that was a pretty fun experiment. It gets really bright. But anyway, it's to create magnesium oxide. Okay, next one, decomposition. So decomposition reactions. You have one substance splits into two or more simpler substances. So it's the opposite of combination. So you're taking a reactant, AB, and you're splitting it into A plus B. So you're decomposing. And here's some examples of that. So you're, right now you have uh, combination, which is uh, putting things together. Then you have decomposition, which is taking them apart. So here's an example of mercury oxide to create mercury and oxygen. So pretty simple. All right. <coughs> then we have single replacement. So single replacement is mostly with ionic interactions. So usually you're going to have ionic compounds in single and double replacement reactions. So in a single replacement reaction, one element takes the place of a different element in another reacting compound. So a way I like to write this is cations switch. All right, so the cations switch or anions or anions switch, not both. So here's what I mean. So let's look at these example ones. So zinc, and you have HCl. The zinc switches with the hydrogen and creates zinc chloride, and hydrogen is alone now. So in this case, the let's say hydrogen is a cation here. It switches with the zinc, and it creates a new compound. And then so you're, you're single replacing. You're single replacing the hydrogen with zinc. And you're just making that one switch. Same thing here. Iron and copper sulfate. Copper 2 sulfate. 
So what happens here is your silver, your uh, your iron switches with the copper. So your cations switch like that. Or you can think about it, your anions will switch. So your anion switches from your copper and it goes to the iron and makes iron sulfate. That is a single replacement reaction. So one element replaces the other. So cation switches with cation. Okay, there's, another, there's an example of it. Now there's double replacement. So double replacement. So this one, we have two replaces, really. It's the same thing, but double. So now you have both cations or anions switch. So in single replacement, you didn't have two ionic compounds with each with a cation and anion. You just had one. For example, you just had zinc, you just had the copper sulfate here, and you had iron alone. In this case, you have two, two ionics, and they will do a double switch. So if you look at AgNO3 and NaCl, the Ag will switch with the Na. That will be a double replacement reaction. And you have two new substances as AgCl and NaNO3. So you see the cations will just switch. Same thing here. Zinc sulfide, sulfide will, zinc will switch with the hydrogen and it'll create zinc chloride and hydrogen sulfate. So both cations will switch or you could think about it as both anions will switch. Either one. Okay, good, good. All right, so that's it. As an example, now combustion. So combustion, it's a very distinct reaction. So combustion, you have a carbon-containing compound, meaning anything organic, such as an oil, such as um, a, a gas, such as butane, propane, like combustion of propane, right? If you have um, a propane container, right, like propane grill, that's what you're doing. You're doing combustion reactions. So you're taking a carbon-containing compound and you're burning it with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. That is a distinct reaction that always happens. So here is the combustion of methane right here, right? CH4 plus O2 yields CO2 and H2O plus energy. It releases heat too. So that's important. But it, it's, it's just known that it releases heat. Now, let's do something here. Let's, let's balance this. All right, so uh, where are we going to go? I'll make a new slide. All right. So combustion reactions are kind of tough to balance. All right, so here you see the answer there, but we'll show you why it's the answer. All right, so here's a combustion reaction, right? So you have a carbon-containing compound. This is propane added oxygen, which is the fire, to create CO2 and H2O. All right, so now we are going to balance this equation. It's not balanced. And the way you tell an equation is not balanced is you can just count up the carbons on the left, carbons on the right. So we see carbons on the left, C3. Carbons on the right, there's only one C. All right, so that's not balanced. So let's balance it. Let's read it from the left to the right side, just like we always do. C3. Only one C. We're going to put a 3 right here. Okay, next, H8. H2. If we put a 4 there, that solves our problem. 4 times 2 is 8. H8, that, that's 8 on the left, 8 on the right. Oxygen, O2. So O2, now we have 3 times O2, which is 6, plus 4 times O. Now we have two sources of oxygen. So we have to keep our numbers in check. So we can even write it down on the side if we want. So oxygens, we have 3 times 2 plus from the CO2 plus 4 times 1, which is equal to 10. And that 4 times 1 comes from the 4 H2O. So now we have 10 on the right side, 2 on the left side. So if we put a 5 here, that solves our problem. All right, so that's our balanced equation. And we don't have to balance the energy part because that's not a, that's not a chemical. It'd be just some amount of energy that comes out. Okay, cool. So um, 
that's basically it. So here is a summary of the different reaction types along with some examples. So this is just a good summary chart that um, that sums it up for you. So be able to identify which reaction is which and just identify the types. Okay, so let's do this. Um, identify each reaction as combustion, decomposition, single replacement, or double replacement. Or, yeah, uh, decomposition, combustion, yeah, all the five. Okay, so the first one, you have aluminum. It's reacting with the H2SO4, and you see the aluminum switches with the hydrogen. If it switches, only one switch, the hydrogen is alone, single replacement. Now this one, you can tell number, uh, part B, you can tell by looking at it, double replacement, if you get good at this, because you can see how NaSO4, if the Na switches with the Ag, you get AgSO4 and NaNO3. So that's a double replacement. Here you have two things combining to one, that's a combination. And then here you have a carbon containing compound, oxygen, CO2, H2O, combustion. Nice, good job. All right, here's another one. You can do that on your own. All right, so we're going to stop here. So if you have any questions, um, use today to ask me the questions. Let me know if I went too fast or too slow. <laughs> but you could always uh, go back and, and uh, rewind. So, okay, so that's it. Um, I'll post the homework right now, too. So you'll have time to do that. And I'll post the second half of the lecture tomorrow. All right, good luck.